Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to what is officially the jankiest lighting setup you've maybe ever seen in a tutorial video. Maybe it's not the worst, but I just decided that I'm going to throw this video together real quick because I just finished recording another YouTube video and I figured why not make a video about how I record my videos. And the video that I just did was a talking head video. There's not going to be a whole lot to it. I don't have any B-roll at the moment. Actually, I might throw that in later or something, but I wanted to get the very basics of recording a YouTube video out of the way. This is going to be that video. So if you're starting on YouTube, stick around. I feel like you're going to learn quite a bit in this that will actually help you but if you're anything above new beginner videographer or video editor or anything like that there's frankly not going to be a lie in this tutorial that's going to help you maybe there will be something i don't know i don't have it planned out i'm just gonna let you inside my mind while i edit the video so Starting right from where we started, the only thing I've done so far is I have put the files from my SD cards onto my hard drive. If you don't know how to do that, figure it out. But then what I'm going to do naturally is I'm going to open up Premiere. Now, if you've been watching my videos lately, you know that I use a mix of Premiere and DaVinci for the most part. I will use Final Cut every once in a while, so I use all three of them. You can also find tutorials for all three of them on my channel, I know. But Premiere, I, I consider myself Premiere dominant, like being right-handed. I just, I know Premiere the best, so we're going to talk about Premiere and... I, I do personally still think that Premiere is the best. So with Premiere open, I'm going to come up here and I'm going to start a new project. I start new projects for just everything I ever do pretty much, unless it's maybe like a wedding video or something where there's going to be like all the dances and this, I'll do a bunch of timelines in the same project. But for the most part, I make everything its own project. I'm just going to come here, choose location, and then make sure I've got the right location selected to save this project to. I personally save all of my projects into the folder where all of the files are at. I used to do in the past, and I still kind of do in some cases, just like a folder that's filled with the projects. You can do it however you want, you know that. I'm gonna name this 22022. This is my 22nd video of 2022 that I'm about to edit, and it's about the Sony a7 IV, which is the camera I'm using right now. And then I'm just gonna hit create. Now, I was in Premiere before they started doing, all, like this new layout came out and all that, so I'm very used to just going in and doing everything from this screen right here, which by the way, somehow I like save to this layout on accident. Whoopsies, don't want to do that. I save this layout on accident. If you ever find yourself, so what I'm looking at right now is this essential sound panel. I don't want that. That's not there on the default layout. What you can do is come up to this guy right here and then hit reset to saved layout and it resets to the default that Premiere has. So if you're ever following along in a tutorial or something and you don't know what the heck is going on, that is probably what the heck is going on. And then I just like having all these kind of like lined up because I'm really weird and I'm also working on a 27 inch monitor if that matters to anybody so I do have a decent amount of real estate to work with and then I just I go into my finder or your file explorer if you're on pc uh, navigate my way to all the stuffs that I need and for this particular case I'll just select the audio folder which is only gonna have one file because like I said simple video I'll hold down command and select the video folder which is again only gonna have one file because simple video and then I just drag them into the import media to start bin down there and then and then you can see the bins didn't even carry over so it's like hey Justin there's only one file in each of these why would we make bins for them who knows so what I'll do is I'll take my a roll which is usually going to be in 24 frames per second and all the other types of settings that I want and I'll just drag that right in now that looks crooked which I'm kind of mad about but for the sake of this we are just going to deal with it so one of the first things that I'll usually do is I'll try to make sure that the audio sounds good and I'll try to make sure that the uh, color looks good now in a YouTube video like this I don't shoot them in long I don't do anything like that. I just use the, the picture profile off setting and I'm perfectly fine with the way that it looks straight out of camera. If you're someone that's just starting out, there's no reason to really be messing around with all that. So what I'll do now is I'll also want to make sure my audio sounds good. Now, of course, I've got, whoops, well, that's cool how that did that. I didn't even know you could do that. So this is my audio from the microphone that is mounted onto my camera, which is not what I want to be using. I want to be using the audio from this microphone right here that I used for the video. This audio is going to sound decent because that's a decent microphone that I have on my camera, but this audio is going to sound better. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to drag it in for the sake of recording this video. You're going to have to make sure that you're actually recording the audio in all these places. I'm going to select this audio track and this audio track, right click, and then go to synchronize, make sure that audio is selected 
in this little pop-up. Track channel is one. There, You should not have a reason to really change that. And I'm just going to hit OK. I'm going to give it a second. It's going to work some sort of magic, and it's just going to sync those up like that. So if you come down here, you can see this little plus 201, minus 201. That just means that that video and audio file got knocked out of sync from each other. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make sure that those are lined up. I'm going to select... C on my keyboard for cut, which I'm going to go over my keyboard shortcuts in a second. That's actually going to be like the real meat and potatoes of this video. And then I'm just going to cut off this like little tail, I guess, if you want to call it that at the beginning and then ripple delete it, which I have set to E on my keyboard. And then I'm gonna go ahead and just delete the that blue audio track altogether because don't need it, wanna use this audio track. Now, another thing that you might be able to notice is that this audio track looks like it's really quiet. I do that on purpose. I would rather have really quiet audio and bring it up in post than be clipping my audio the whole time because clipped audio is basically unfixable. But what I do here is I just select the audio layer like I just did, and then I press G on my keyboard, which brings up the gain, and then I'll go normalize all all peaks to negative one. This tends to work for me. Just bring it up to a standardized audio level. Let me listen to it real quick. Camera setup that I have been using for so that sounds fine to me based on what I can hear right now. I am using my monitors and I don't think you guys are getting audio in like the screen record and all that type of stuff, but I'm not worried about that right now. That's how I handle my audio. Now, if there was something like uh, a buzzing in the background or my heater was running or something like that, I'd go through this whole process for setting up a noise gate and whatnot, but that's for a different video. So basically what I'm going to do from here is I am going to go through and do what is apparently called top and tail cutting through this entire thing. And the way that I have that set up is I have my keyboard shortcuts set up in all of the video editors. And I don't think it's the default for any of them. It's close to the default for Premiere, but it's not. To where W will just make a cut across both layers. So if I take this guy here, it'll make a cut across both layers wherever the playhead is at. So if I take the playhead here and I move it into this gap and I press W, you can see that it makes a cut right there. I'm going to command Z just to undo that. So that's what W does. And I just keep hitting that with my pointer finger on my left hand. So for example, I'll make it right there where you can see this gap starts in the audio. And then what Q will do is that it'll make a cut at wherever the playhead is and then basically ripple delete everything behind it. So if I take my playhead right there and I hit Q, it cuts that little section out and you can see if I zoom in here, I didn't really get enough of that. I more so want to do something like this and then... My last shortcut that's kind of important is E, which is right next to Q and W, of course. Um, I'll reach over there, and that's in case I end up in a situation like this. It'll just ripple delete the whole thing. And so what I'll do is I'll just go through the whole video, and I'll basically cut out all the gaps doing that. So let's do a little time lapse here. So like a lot of this stuff at the beginning when you can just see these really big gaps like that, I might go through and do that first or I'll usually do it like to whatever's in my field of view, but I I will always go through videos and actually listen to them too because sometimes you're going to want to make J cuts, sometimes you're going to want to make L cuts, and I'll talk about that in another second. It's also worth noting that you can go through and when you're watching your video back like this in, I think all three of the video editors, but particular in Premiere, you can use the L key to start playing and then double the speed of the playback and then double the speed of the playback again. So it's like 1x speed, then 2x speed, then 4x, then 8x, on and on. I never even go to 4x. I do 2x a lot though. So I'll start playing this like this. And then if I want it to play back faster, I just hit L twice. And that can help you edit a little bit faster. You also don't want to get, go too overboard with the like cutting out all the gaps because sometimes they do play a role in the video. Sometimes the silence is actually intentional or there for a reason or plays some sort of a role, especially in actual films. It might be a part of the story. It might be a part of the dialogue. Uh, it, you all know that silence can speak volumes sometimes. So don't get don't get too cut happy with all the silences in your videos. Okay, so in a situation like this right here, this is where I might perform what would be a J cut, I guess, which is basically just, you can see if I play through this right now. Editing the video. And you can see that's a really kind of hard cut. It just doesn't look very good. The video. Or I go from there to looking the completely other way. So basically something that you can do to make that look just a little bit more seamless is take just the video file, don't touch the audio file and pull it over a little bit and then pull this one back to connect it. So the audio is going to be changing a little bit before the video, but here's what it does. The in editing the video so that I it just makes it look a little bit better. Still a little bit of a rough cut. Sometimes you're just gonna have rough cuts, but here we are. 
So this is a type of example when I make a little joke or something like that in my videos a lot I'll want to emphasize it or I'll want to just kind of re-engage the audience a little bit. So I will cut out the section right here and I will just literally click on that. We're going to make sure effect controls is selected up here. Probably will be by default for you. And then I'm just going to scale it into 110. And that's going to give us this. The other cool people that are watching this, this is that just gives you that little bit of like, oh, hey, look, a video. We did a video editing thing right here. So here again on something where I'm saying the word like punch and I'm talking about, I'm going to get real creative here. You ready? Where I'm saying the word punch and I'm talking about how an APS-C sensor punches in on an image. And if you know about videography, you know an APS-C sensor punches in about 1.5, 1.6 times. Somewhere in there, I'm sure it's an exact number that I don't even know. Sorry for goofing that up. But uh, so what I will do is I will probably punch this in 1.6 times. So I'll make this one 60. And I will reposition it just a little bit to make it look less stupid. Just punch in further into the image. Again, that's not that big of a deal, but it is... So this might be another good point to bring up, but right here I repeated myself. All of them can be good. The, the biggest benefit, the biggest like real... The biggest benefit, the biggest real benefit... So I can cut out that part where I said the biggest benefit. And this is actually really big with YouTube videos is that if you catch yourself giving the same information more than once, cut it out. Not all of it. Cut out all but one of those instances of you giving the same information. Be good. The biggest benefit, the biggest like, can be good. The, the biggest like real. The, I should cut that out. That's just the word the. And I might jump cut this one too. The biggest like real. Be good. The biggest like real benefit to full frame is that. I do cut ums out of my videos, by the way. I just don't say them a lot anymore. But I said one right here. So that is the end of me cutting this. I get through this a lot quicker with those keyboard shortcuts anymore. I used to, trust me, I spent a lot of time using the razor tool and like cut, cut, select, delete, cut, cut, select, delete. That's how I used to edit videos. Please get yourself set up to do these. I'll try to leave, uh, I don't know if I can leave a screenshot or whatever, but just, just try to figure out how to get your keyboard shortcuts set up that way. Maybe I'll make a whole other video on it, but don't hold me to that. So some of the other stuff that I do here. So I don't always do a great job at making sure that I have an intro to my videos, but some Sometimes it just kind of naturally happens. So I might watch through this. So I don't really have a good intro point in this video. So I'm actually just not going to use my intro. I don't use it in every single video. But if I were, I made my intro a long time ago in After Effects, which is just like my logo zooming in and this little like shiny glare thing going across it and then coming back out. You can find it on any other video on my channel. But in this one, I'm just basically not going to add it in. So at this point, what I do, I might go find video files and photo files, uh, some combination of stock and screenshots based on the things that I'm talking about. And I might just add them in here as B-roll or I might just leave this like this. The last thing that I I can say I will do that I do to every video is I will at least put music here at the end of the video. So I have a sound library in here somewhere myself, assets, sound library, art list. I'm an art list guy and I will go funk. I'm feeling funk today and I'll just use this one for the time being. And then a video like this. Okay, so what I'll do, I'll cut off this weird little tail right here, pressing C using the razor, cutting it off. I will do that for like individual layers and short things like this. I'll bring this back to here usually like the last cut that i made in the video is a decent spot for me to do that and then i'll make the whole thing i'll select it because the music is always just very loud even with your audio normalized and all that it's just a little bit extra loud so i'll select the music track i'll come up here to the level make sure that this is not highlighted in blue otherwise you're going to start an animation which for audio doesn't make a lot of sense but you don't really want it you don't want to put a keyframe there and if that little thing is ticked it's going to put a keyframe there so untick it and then i go like straight to negative 30 this always falls somewhere you'll have to listen back to it see what sounds good um, this always falls somewhere like the negative 22 to negative 30 range, sometimes negative 35. I don't know why it's never really the same, but it never is. And all I'll do is I'll go right to the end of the video here. I'll try to get that exact frame that it ends on. And this is where the keyframes are going to come in. So I'm going to retick this guy, which is going to set a keyframe there. And if I expand this a little bit, this little window in here shows you your keyframes. And then I always go 20 frames to the right and then set it to negative 10. So here's what I mean by that. I'm going to hold down shift and use my right 
right arrow key, which will take you five frames at a time. So five, 10, 15, 20. And then once I'm there, what I'm going to do is I'm going to change this number to negative 10. And what that's going to do is it's going to set another keyframe. And if I expand this audio, you can see it shows you kind of visually there that the volume of the music is just going to gradually come up. And then what I'll do is I'll go again to the end point of my video, the last frame, boom, to black, okay. And then what I'll do is I'll take note of what my little timestamp is here, and I want to go exactly 20 seconds after that. So in this case, it's easy. It's nice when it doesn't jump over a minute, because I can just change this three to a five, which by the way, this is hours in front, then minutes, seconds, and frames. So I will just change this to... 57, which will take my playhead there, and I will cut that and just completely delete the rest of the song. And the reason I do this 20 seconds of black screen at the end is because that's where I put the end screen that YouTube provides for you, where it's going to come up and it's going to say, hey, subscribe to the channel. Here's another recommended video. Here's another recommended video. And YouTube allows you to do that to the last 20 seconds of your video. So this just really helps me. Time that you can adjust it in YouTube and stuff like that. But I found that just leaving a 20 second blank screen at the end of video every video makes it so that when I go to upload this to YouTube, I'll just add end screen, choose the elements I want, and it'll come up at least pretty dang close to right where the video ends is where the end screen will start by default. And then I will just for the sake of it, I'll come over here into my effects. I will search for exponential fade is what it's called in this particular program. And I'll just slap that on the end there so the music will fade out. And I don't adjust that at all usually. So maybe I'll make it a little bit longer, you know, something like that. But there you have it. So that is that. I'm trying to think if there's anything else I really do before finalizing a video. Video, but there's not much. I mean, in a basic video like this, and for anyone that's trying to get started and can do a talking head similar to this one, this is going to be a decent edit. Like I said, I'll probably go through this after I hang up this video, but I feel like this video is getting a little long and beyond the point now. But I'll go through this and I might do some more of those punch-ins or I'll do like a zoom-in, which is the same thing, except you just use those keyframes in it and it'll zoom in and out. And that's also easier to do in other programs and whatnot. I'm not going to get into that whole debate right here, but that, that about does it actually hold that thought i guess it would be worth it for me to show you the rest of what i do so i'm trying to decide if i just want to export this the way that it's i think i will because i'm just running behind on this video anyway so when i go to export the video i'm going to come up here to export and here are the settings i use i will first of all name it and i will name it i'll try to name it something very similar to what i'm at least aiming for the title to be and i won't do the 22002 thing here because as far as i understand the metadata in the actual video file that you post to youtube plays some sort of rule in search engine optimization. So I'm going to call this Y upgrade to the A74. And I can't put a question mark in. And again, I'm just going to make sure that's going to the right location, put it in the folder with everything else. And then I am usually just choosing match source adaptive high bit rate, but I'll come in here and customize it a little bit more, particularly for YouTube. I'll make sure that the source is matched, which it already should be. Click on more. And then this is the main part that I'm worried about. I always do any more for these types types of videos, I'll do constant bit rate and I'll basically just try to get the bit rate up. Now, I don't necessarily know what's good, I guess. As far as I understand, the higher the bit rate, the better. So I could send it all the way up to 240 to get the maximum quality possible, but that could also definitely be overkill. So I'm wondering if it was already at 60 by default, I might just bump it up to like 65 ish and then we export it and then we upload it to youtube so now that is going to be everything and i will see you guys in the next video